Tales from the Hood. Fictional stories designed to provoke conversation around themes that are pervasive in the Black community. Everyday life in the hood. One day mom told son, hey, go to the corner store and pick me up a beverage. The son asked, what beverage are you talking about? What do you need? We got stuff in the fridge. Nah, I need an adult beverage. All right, cool. The store was about a block or two away. So I took my bike, rode it up to the corner store. The corner store is normally a place where there tend to be some loiters. Most of them were drug dealers or had something to sell. My mom had a good relationship with the store owner. His name was Mr. Kim. He's an Asian guy, had the corner store for some years. Mr. Kim knew my mom well, and anytime we come in and we have a list that she provided with errands and what to get when we visit the corner store, he would be okay to comply and let us get whatever we needed so that I can take it back. This particular trip, mom told me to pick up some wine coolers. You know, those fruity alcoholic drinks. A lot of the ladies like my mom definitely loved them. Strawberry kiwi was a favorite. Go to the fridge, pick it up. She told me to get me something for my troubles, for taking the journey, taking the trip for her. Definitely picked me up a bag of chips and honey bun. Took it to the cash register. Gave Mr. Kim my $10 food stamp. Told him to keep the change. The items added up to about 5 or $6, but... Mr. Kim knew what it was. He keep the change, let me go ahead and do what I gotta do and get back to my mom. At the time, I was probably about 12 years old. So, as soon as I'm leaving the store, I got a bag full of goods. The place where I left my bike, there was nothing there. Now prior to me walking into the store, I noticed that Dre, the neighborhood bully, you know, everybody got a bully in the neighborhood, usually one or two. The neighborhood bully was gone as well with his brother and a couple other loiters. They were nowhere to be found, looked around, nowhere to be found. And so, you know, I quickly asked somebody, hey, did you see my bike? Of course, being in that neighborhood, the whole concept of not snitching was in full force. Doesn't matter if you were part of the community or not. Nobody saw my bike, even though they've been standing there the entire time. So, you know, I go ahead and walk my block or two back home, laid the goods down on the table, talk to my mom, say, hey, mom, you know, I got this stuff, but hey, guess what? That bike you got me for Christmas, it was gone, stolen. My mom flipped out. You know, she spent her $150, $200 to get that bike. And she was like, hey, ain't nobody gonna steal my baby's bike. Of course that, you know, you don't want your mom stepping up for you. So I said, hey mom, guess what? You ain't even gotta do anything, I'll find it. And when I find it, you know, I'll, I'll get it back. I'll take care of it on my own. Hey, you know, the whole day, I go look around the block, look around the neighborhood, trying to see if I see someone riding it. Lo and behold, I went to the neighborhood across the street, the projects across the street. There's Andre with his with his gang of with his gang of brothers and some of his uh his allies just chilling outside talking, foot on the bike, casually like like he didn't just steal it a few hours ago. So I walked up to him, hey Dre, you know, that's my bike, man, let me go ahead and get that back. Dre stood up slowly, along with his brothers, his allies. What bike? I thought he'd been watching too much Friday and he was taking himself too serious. He was like, no, I'm serious, what bike? It's my bike. My grandma got it for me. Knowing good and well, 
Nobody see that man in the neighborhood with a bike. My bike, it even had my name on it. I etched my initials in it the day my mom gave it to me. All right, Dre, stop playing. That's what I said. So Dre pushed me. What bike? You know, he stepped a few steps closer. And I'm probably a solid four foot ten at the time. He's a, a whole three, four years older than me. To me, it seemed like he was about six foot eight. So, I, you know, I, I walked away, turned around. said, all right, Dre, I'll be back. So I went back to the house, told my mom, hey, Ma, I found the bike. She said, where's that? Oh, Dre got it. Dre, who's Dre? Um, knowing good and well, my mom didn't know the inner workings of the neighborhood. All she does is go to work, come back. And most of the time when she gets back, she's too tired to, to take interest in what's going on in the neighborhood and what's going on in our lives outside of school. Say, oh, Dre, you know, so-and-so's grandson. Oh, I know, I know so-and-so. Let me go talk to him real quick. What you mean go talk to him real quick? You don't know Dre. So my mom put on her shoes. She was already tired after coming home from work. Second job. All right, come with me. <laughs> what you mean come with you? Where you going? We about to go get your bike back. So reluctantly, I followed trying to see what was going on, curious as to what she was going to do. And so, you know, I, I navigated us to where Dre was sitting or where he had been sitting. He had moved between the time I went home to get my mom and the time I, we came back. But he wasn't too far off. I saw him in the distance, so I pointed, there he is. There's my bike. She said, show sure is. That's your bike. Let's go get it. So we walked up slow. Dre and his allies got up. His gang of brothers, they got up. Same scenario that I just experienced before. What you want? Dre said. Oh, Dre, you know I told you, man. That's my bike, man. Let me go ahead and get that. He started to push me, but he saw my mom standing right there. What bike? So my mom casually stepped up. She went off on him. Boy, if you don't get my bike back, did you pay for that bike? He ain't answer. Get out my way. He flinched a little bit as she aggressively lunged forward. Get out my way. Flinched a little bit. His brothers was caught off guard because they ain't used to seeing Dre flinch. But there was something about respecting a black woman in the community that I think Dre subconsciously, he got it being that he was raised by his grandma. He wouldn't want anybody to disrespect her. I think a part of him saw his grandma in my mom's eyes. He didn't say anything else. And so, as my mom approached the bike, and me following right behind her because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to stray away from from that bubble that she exuded of protection. She stood in front of the bike. She told me to go pick it up, get your bike, let's go. So as I approached the bike, I grabbed one handle looked around, make sure nobody was coming up on me to push me down and take the bike. So I swung one leg over, got on the bike, started to ride towards my mom and towards the street, headed back to the house. I'm looking back the whole time. I'm not leaving my mom, I'm not doing anything that's gonna jeopardize, one, her safety, and two, getting my bike back home. It's not like I could have done much. 
Most of those guys were a little bit older than me. It's a neighborhood bully right there, ma. You stood in his face, you jumped at him. You got my bike back. Much respect. It's not like I lacked any respect any other time, but something about it made her seem like a superhero in my eyes. All right, mama, you're a low key gangster. One thing that I thought about when I got home was that if he had a father in his life, if I had a father in my life, maybe those guys could have talked things out. Maybe he wouldn't have done the things he had done or became the neighborhood bully in the first place. See, the lack of fathers in our black communities, it affects us the most. It is the underlying thing that prevents our black community from progressing forward. Now it's not the only one, but a large part of the lack of fathers, the lack of male role models in our lives affects so many different aspects of our lives and people in the black community There's something to be said about basketball coaches, football coaches, preachers, other guys that may be fulfilling these roles or look to as mentors, role models, but they're so few and far between. And those people who, those, those young men who don't have those people in their lives, they're affected. The mothers are affected. The community is affected. I thought about all this while I was riding back home, putting my bike in the house where it had been before. Mama was a gangster, but I wonder why she's a gangster. Why does she have to be so hard to the point where she had to come to my aid as a young man to retrieve my bike. She had no fear. She didn't care who was out there as long as she got her baby's bike back. That was her main objective and she accomplished that. But still, the lack of fathers, the lack of male role models could have changed that scenario and not just that scenario, could change the trajectory of black youth, black men in the hood trying to get out. They have a positive beacon, a positive light, pointing them in the direction that they should go. We would be better off. The whole crabs in the barrel mentality, it exudes every day if you're in the neighborhood or an environment like this, we call it the hood, but really it's a trap. It's a trap in the sense that you have people that look like you that keep you from getting to where you need to go. And they try to justify it by saying, I need it more. Why not? We need to get it together. The fact that I had a bike and he didn't, he felt like it was his to take that from me because he wanted it more. But his grandma, my mom, we lived in the same neighborhood. Why was this his outcome? Why was that line of thinking so rational to him to where he didn't think about anybody else that was affected? Crabs in the barrel. And he didn't know he was portraying this character trait. He was just living every day as a neighborhood bully. If it wasn't my bike, it was somebody else's bike. If it wasn't my shoes, it was somebody else's shoes, somebody else's basketball somebody else's skateboard, 
But something about what Dre did on a day-to-day -day basis, not just that instance, shows how young black men are willing to conform to their environment and to some aspect they're respected as being a bully, regarded as being someone who's strong, somebody who take what they want. But realistically, he was in the same neighborhood as me. All the many days, all the many weeks and years of him taking what he wanted still led him back to being right there on his front porch, hanging out with the fellas, doing nothing, not developing as a person, as a human. One day he will be a father. And what does that look like? The fact that he didn't have a father in his life, nor did his brothers. He didn't know it, but it affects him. It affected me. It affect all the people that you don't think it would affect indirectly him not having a father in his life impacted other people in his environment. All this from an errand that was given by my mom to go to the corner store. These are Tales from the Hood. Thank you.